when Oumuamua traveled through our solar system back in 2017. People around the world paid attention. It was the first interstellar visitor astronomers had ever identified. Shiny, oblong, and potentially hundreds of feet in length, the object was unlike anything scientists had ever seen. Not exactly an asteroid. Not exactly a comet either. Then in August 2019, Comet Tui Borisov traveled through our solar system, becoming the second interstellar visitor to cruise through. Together, the visitors generated a wave of inquiry and speculation. As astronomers tracked these objects through various telescopes, they detected what NASA described as non-gravitational acceleration in the motion. In other words, acceleration or speed that scientists can't attribute to gravity alone. Something inside these objects was adding to their speed. While Oumuamua and Borisov were asteroids or comets speculated to be extraterrestrial artifacts of natural entities, astronomers now suspect that there might be entire planets within our solar system of artificial alien origins. Orbit Beyond the blue. Although interstellar objects are rare, the solar system is old, and many have likely visited that we weren't even aware of. There's bound to be more ISOs than just those two. And a new study says our solar system has probably captured some of these interstellar visitors, though they don't stay for long. Astronomers think that some of these objects can be captured in solar orbits. And it's the same theory that they are now applying to the planets. One study takes a closer look at ISO captures and tests the idea that some ISOs could be captured in near-Earth orbits rather than solar orbits. The researchers behind the work say that there could be a steady population of ISOs in near-Earth orbit. Finding tiny objects in distant space is extremely difficult. The only images we get of other solar systems are either of their stars or weak images of the odd exoplanet. Sometimes astronomers detect debris disks and other features, but fine detail eludes them. So it's nice that other solar systems send the odd involuntary vistas our way. Studying these ISOs is one way to gain insight into other solar systems and how they form and evolve. Many scientists currently searching for traces of extraterrestrial life focus on planets orbiting within the habitable zones of their stars, where liquid water might exist. Researchers have proposed a mind-boggling alternative that turns this convention on its head. What if alien civilizations learned to use free-floating rogue planets, which are not bound to any star, to traverse across interstellar distances? Cosmic hitchhikers is what they are calling it. Scientists estimate that tens of billions of planets have been catapulted from their native star systems by gravitational encounters with other objects, resulting in a large hidden population. They are generally tricky to spot, because there is no nearby starlight to illuminate them, of untethered rogue planets drifting across the Milky Way. Advanced extraterrestrial civilizations, if they exist, might hitch a ride on free-floating planets. They also point out that whether any are near our solar system is a major point of interest for astronomers. While rogue planets may not benefit from life-nourishing stellar energy, the researchers point out that these worlds may still be habitable, especially if they contain the kind of subsurface oceans that are suspected to exist in a few bodies within our own solar system. Only recently scientists found that Saturn's moon Enceladus has all the ingredients necessary for life. It's no longer a far-fetched idea to imagine that there may be other planets that have the same. A paper called Close Encounters of the Interstellar Kind, exploring the presence of interstellar objects in near-Earth orbit, aims to investigate the same. Recent research showed us that the upcoming Vera Rubin Observatory could find up to five ISOs per year, and that the Oort cloud, if it exists, might contain more ISOs than native solar system objects. 
Other research suggests that cosmic rays might erode most ISOs to nothing. Other papers have shown that many ISOs would be pulled into Jupiter and destroyed. If there are captured visitors in near-Earth orbit, they don't last long. ISOs captured by Jupiter into near-Earth orbits have a half-life of about 50,000 years. Ones captured by the Earth-Moon have a half-life of about 130,000 years. Another way of looking at this is that the population of Jupiter-captured ISOs dwindles to 10% of the original fraction in only 800,000 years. For Earth-Moon-captured ISOs, it's 2.1 million years. But many of these objects will be exceedingly small, nothing like Oumuamua or Borisov. The population is dominated by ISOs, which are about 1 meter in diameter. There is no way that an object like Borisov or Oumuamua could ever be captured unless we did it artificially. If we are ever going to find one of these captured ISOs, it'll be up to facilities like the Vera Rubin Observatory and its legacy survey of space and time. It's a planned 10-year survey of the southern sky that should begin sometime after its first light in August 2024. It'll repeatedly image the sky and will find small objects that are moving through the solar system. Some estimates say it will find a few Oumuamua L-sized objects per year. According to the authors, there could be a more substantial population of captured ISOs hiding among other NEOs. This demonstrates the need to study them in greater detail. The best way to study them is to go out and meet one of the larger ones. The ESA's Comet Interceptor mission could do it. Relying on the advance notice of an approaching ISO that the Vera Rubin Observatory will provide, a robotic spacecraft could sit in wait at the Sun-Earth Lagrange 2 point until a suitable ISO is identified. Then the interceptor could be sent to intercept it, observe it, and collect a sample from its tail. The ESA is partnering with JAXA, the Japanese Space Agency, and they plan to launch the Comet Interceptor in 2029. By detecting and studying captured interstellar objects, we could learn about the origins of such objects, and the formation and evolution of exoplanetary systems, and even our solar system. But what do I know? Orbit. Beyond the Blue.